Hello and welcome to another episode of the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week with me, Craig Barton. Now, a bit of nostalgia here for you on Resource of the Week this week. At the start of my career and for many, many years, I was flipping obsessed with Tarsia jigsaw resources. I, my little claim to fame is that on the Mr. Barton Maths website, I've got the world's largest collection of Tarsia jigsaws for, for mathematics. And I used to use them all the time. But a few years ago, I started getting a little bit concerned that they weren't the most efficient way to get kids learning and practicing key things. Because the cutting out was taking ages, the sticking was taking ages. Um, and that, by ages, I mean it took the kids ages if they were doing it individually. And it was taking me flipping hours if I was trying to do a class set and so on. And I started to think, mm, is this the best use of their time? Are they getting through as many questions? Are they thinking as hard as they would be about the mathematics than if they were doing something else? So I, I, get, I started to lose my love for Tarsia a little bit. But then I thought about doing, it, doing something different. And that was using Convince Me. So instead of giving kids the uh, questions, the individual jigsaw pieces to put together, let's give them the completed Tarsia jigsaw and let's ask them some interesting questions about it. So I started uh, kind of writing a range of resources on these and there's, they're all on TES, um, so you need, I'm sure you can kind of Google them and find them. But I was dead happy when I saw this because um, another TES author has taken the idea and run with it and come up with a beautiful Tarsia Convince Me activity. For a topic that we don't often see resources um, on on TES, arc length and sector length. It's a, um, it's a bit of a niche topic, but it's a really important one. Like kids need to do it for GCSE. If you're doing higher tier GCSE, it's a really important topic for kids to do. And sometimes for these niche topics, there's not that many amazing resources around. So I was dead happy when I saw this one. So let's have a look at it. There's, there's a fair few files included, a kind of PowerPoint introduction file. So I'll just show you that one there that, that looks like this. And then the actual uh, resources themselves. So this PowerPoint introduction slide is great for explaining it. So I'll, I'll zoom in on this jigsaw in a second, give you a clearer shot of this. But essentially, there are 10 correct answers. There are five incorrect matchings. That's kind of really important. And then this bit, I love this. There are three question marks for matching up. And the kids have to try and solve it, figure out what's going on, and watch out for units. So let's take a look at this so we can see. Now, those of you who've never used Tarsia, and this is an important thing to say, by the way, if kids don't have a flipping clue what Tarsia jigsaws are, then you're either going to need to explain it first um, or give them experience of doing one the standard way, because otherwise they're not going to have a clue what's going on here. So the way Tarsia jigsaws work is you have a question. So, for example, uh, this thing here. Um, and that, oh, sorry, no, that's a really, really, really bad example. You have um, an answer there, and that is matched up to a question there. So that the answer to the arc length of that should match up with that answer, and so on as it goes around. So each question is matched to an answer that it that it touches. Okay, so the idea is you give students a completed jigsaw. Ten of the matchings are absolutely spot on. Five of them are wrong. And crucially, three of them haven't been solved. So for example, if we look at this question mark with that one, kids first need to actually work out what is the arc length of that particular uh, particular thing there and write the answer down there. Likewise, this one hasn't been solved here. So what is the arc length of that and write the answer there and so on. So kids have got three kind of questions to do normally, but then they've got to find these five mistakes. And that's the bit I really like about this because if you do this really carefully, and this author has, which I, I think is brilliant, you don't just make the mistakes at random. You don't just write any old random number in there um, uh, for kids to try and figure out. You make classic mistakes. You make common misconceptions. So maybe it's a unit conversion. Maybe they've used the wrong angle. Maybe they've done pi r squared instead of pi d or whatever. Maybe they've forgotten to divide by 360 degrees. All the common misconceptions that you've seen kids make with these, you can include in those wrong answers. So it's really nice because what students have to do, they have to consider every single com uh, combination here. They have to work out all the different questions and compare them with the answers. But they do that without the need to do any cutting, any sticking or anything like that. They're also addressing common misconceptions, which is often difficult to do in a worksheet format. And also it looks different. It's not a worksheet full of 15, 20 questions that kids have to kind of work their way through. It looks different. It's all on a single side of A4. It's kind of visually quite appealing and so on. So I find that it's, it's quite a good way to get kids to do more work than they normally would do. So I really, really like the, um, the Tarsia Convince Me. And it's kind of reigniting my love for this again. I've, I've not dabbled with Tarsia Convince Me for a couple of years. 
And again, those of you who've never done this or never used the Tarsier software, it's so easy to create these because you essentially just write in 10 questions and 10 correct answers. Then you write in five questions and five cleverly chosen um, wrong answers. Then you just uh, write in three questions and put three question marks and then quick click, <laughs> click create and it creates the jigsaw for you. And you're just good to go and you just print it out exactly as this author's done. You've got all the answers there to check it and so on. Um, I like to give kids this out, get it stuck in their book, um, or kind of get a massive one on a big kind of sheet of A3 so a few kids can be around um, seeing it at the same time. But get them to write their answers in their book. Um, I think it gets a little bit messy if, you, if you're writing answers on the jigsaw. Just my kind of personal opinion. And yeah, just to just to remind us to challenge, you've got 10 correct ones. Can you find the incorrect ones and correct them? Why are they wrong? That's the important thing. Why are they wrong? What common misconception does it reveal? And then the three question marks, can you actually work out the answer themselves? And the final thing I should say about this one, the, the author mentions in the description that kids, her, uh, his or her kids have struggled converting units from centimeters to, to millimeters and meters to centimeters and so on. So there's some unit challenges involved in that as well. So. All in all, what a wonderful resource this is. I think it's absolutely brilliant. At the time of recording, it's been downloaded 36 times. That is a crime, a crime against quality test math resources. So get on here, get it downloaded, get it used, hop on here, share a positive comment if you, if you liked it and used it. And I shall return with a fresh test math resource of the week next week. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.